Republicans are out today with a new ad targeting Vice President Kamala Harris, clearly hedging against the possibility that Harris will step in to take President Biden's spot if Biden were to end his campaign. To that end, new Reuters Ipsos polling shows that in a hypothetical matchup against Trump, Harris outperforms four other potential Democratic candidates, losing to Trump by just one percentage point. That is perhaps why at least one Democrat is on the record saying Kamala Harris should be the Democratic nominee for president in 2024. Joining me now is that Democrat, Tim Ryan, former congressman from Ohio. Tim, it is good to see you this evening. Thanks for being here tonight. Let's just get right to your argument. Thank why you. Kamala Harris? Well, we need a generational change. I mean, there's no question about that. Uh, you know, I think you look at the, the, what they call the double haters. They don't want Biden. They don't want Trump. I think it's really important that we give them an alternative. So there'd be the huge generational change. You look at the practical politics of the situation. Look where we're bleeding out. We're, we're soft with a lot of the minority communities and we're bleeding out young people. And I think Kamala could come in instantaneously, juice our base, pull in young people. I've been getting calls from Ohio uh, that want, you know, working class people. They want Biden to step down. And they're telling me they'd be excited for a Kamala Harris run. So I think she, she checks a lot of these boxes. And you take the choice issue just real quick. I think there's so much at stake for women. For her to be able to prosecute that issue for us in a debate against Donald Trump, I think, that, you know, you add all that together and I think we're back in the game and we could make a good run at this thing. Do you think it's a decidedly different moment in, in, than it was in 2020 when she did throw her hat in the ring for the presidential nomination and was out before Iowa? Oh, a thousand percent. I mean, you know, you're better at your job three and a half years later. Uh, most Americans who do something for three and a half years, especially at a very high level, you get better. You grow. You become seasoned. She's already has a lot of raw talent and ability and charisma. Uh, and presidential campaigns are pretty tough, so that's a heck of a standard. But I think I, it culminated for me in my mind, Alex, uh, to, to like start, really start thinking about this, was how she handled herself on debate night. Absolute star. I mean, I followed her. I was so enamored. I followed her across all the cable uh, s stations as she was doing her interviews, and she was masterful. And I think that's the culmination of three and a half years. So to me, it's like, what are we waiting for? We have a very good candidate here. Let's help her grow into the campaign. Uh, and, you know, I think it would be a great move for Biden to kind of set up somebody like Kamala Harris as, a, as the crowning jewel of, of a, what is this really significant and well done presidency. For just for in the last 72 hours uh, or the last five days, uh, there have been a lot of names mentioned. And what's been so odd about this is only in the last 12 to 24 has Kamala Harris's name really popped up as, as potentially a leading contender, if, with the giant caveat, uh, that Bi Biden has not dropped out, and only if he does drop out would she go, obviously, to the top of the ticket. I wonder, you know, what that signals. The Wall Street Journal sort of takes the opposite opinion uh, from yours. They're saying that Biden is effectively trying to scare Democrats that Harris is the only alternative if he drops out. The reason we're seeing this sort of flurry of pr prognostication about Harris's viability is because the Biden campaign is floating that as a disincentive. Do you think that that's tortured logic? I mean, what do you, what's your response <laughs> to that idea? Uh, I, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I've, I, I'm not understanding a lot of what's coming out of the White House in the last 72 hours. I don't agree with it. I think the way they've handled this has been tremendously unhelpful uh, to, you know, just voters like me, former members of Congress, and current members of Congress. So I don't know exactly what what the machinations going on inside the White House are. I just hope they will take a very, very close look, maybe even have the president watch the debate again, really see what's happening. I mean, I'm, I'm here in Ohio. Like, the average people are still talking about what happened on the debate night and Thursday. We're not going to shift that narrative, Alex. It's just we've got to come to reality. We've got to be... One of the things people don't like about Democrats, we're not decisive. We don't act with conviction enough. They don't see us as strong. This is an opportunity for us to shift all 
all of those kind of narratives that the Republicans have pinned on us as a party. And I think the opportunity now is to do the right thing. Let's let's quit dilly dallying around here. We got a race to win. You saw the Chevron decision. We saw the immunity decision. The Supreme Court, fl excuse me, flipped the Constitution. Uh, and turned it upside down. I mean, what are we doing here? Do we want federal courts that have a Clarence Thomas in every federal court across the country, every U.S. prosecutor in every jurisdiction, every district across the country is going to be from the Federalist Society? Do we recognize what would happen to our country if we do that? And we're sitting here thinking, you know, the, the biggest threat I, th I saw the other night at the debate was that Trump was recreating covid recreating the economy, recreating climate, recreating his tax cut without any pushback at all. He's shape-shifting people's minds because we're not pushing back. We can't do that for the next four months. We'll get destroyed. And so, you know, I hope members of Congress step up. I hope this letter that people are talking about, I hope they send it and, and really let the White House know what's at stake here for their own personal careers, but the potential, you know, to, to, for our own democracy here that we're also concerned about. Former Congressman Tim Ryan with an impassioned argument for the vice president going to the top of the Democratic ticket. Thanks for making time tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.